last thing to happen in the weekend was probably the most contentious. Uh, Brendan, you've already told me off air that you have some quite strong feelings about what happened. Well, the- well, I did at the time. I mean, instantly something wasn't wrong, right with that kick. And it started even before the ball fell off the tee. That the cameras were flying around, at, you know, dejected Frenchmen when the penalty was given and 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 the bloody physio, right, French physio running on randomly. And you suddenly went to Garbizi, and there was only 22 seconds left on the clock. And he scarcely started his preparation. So I thought, number one, I thought, what has happened there? I don't know, but I think what happened is that the physio went and started waving his hands around and, and with the three big players who were standing opposite him 10 metres away, this physio was moving around. And I think he was probably waiting for that bloke to settle down, thinking the clock had stopped. Anyway, I don't know that for sure because we haven't seen the isolated camera. But then I think with 12 seconds to go, the ball falls off the tee. Three of the French lumps start walking forward which they're not allowed to do. They are just not allowed to do that. You cannot move when it's a penalty. And then two of them move back. One of them moves forward again. And the physio was still there busy around. So it absolutely had to be reset. There's, there's no doubt about it in law. And and the ref didn't do it. And he didn't allow himself that condor moment to just have a look at the, the footage for 30 seconds after he, you know, before, before he blew the final whistle. Now, in one way, you know, my heart bleeds frickly on this one. That was absolutely shambolic. But, you know, they had their chances to win the match. I thought, just I thought, possibly their try was a hint of a forward pass. You know, I'm pretty solid on a forward passes, so I have to mention that. So, you know, was it daylight robbery? Possibly not. But a bit with Scotland the previous week, they got done on that final decision. And if rugby's going to be so pedantic about its laws, it has to get these massive calls right at the end. It has to make have a way of getting it right. Well, well, re- re- referees, to my mind, it's the spirit of the age now, isn't it? That they're 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 scared to act on their own initiative. Mm. They're in a sort of Lindsay Hoyle position, where if you actually go away from what's written down, all hell breaks loose. And there are accusations of bias or favoritism. I mean, I mean, if the if the referee had prolonged that, if he'd just taken a unilateral decision, which would have been in perfectly in line with what is sometimes called common sense, to say, well, the ball's fallen off the tee, so we're going to give him a little, we're going to give him a few sec- uh, seconds extra. Galtier would have gone into space. Yeah, but I don't think you have to do that, Chris. I, the ball falling off the tee, that's not the issue. That does happen, and that I think that has to be included. No, you're or, talking about the physio. I'm talking yeah. about the oh, bloody yeah. movement by the French. It's, that is in law. That is well, in black and white. They can't do it. Well, yeah. that's just what we call pratology, isn't it? I mean, I, I remember Dave Tennyson doing something stupid like that. You know, he actually ran between the French kicker and the tee in Marseille. It was only a World Cup warm-up game, but it was quite a it was quite a significant thing. But you can't um, do it. It's uh, well, you, 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 pretty categorical. Kind of, he, he was the kit man, you know. Um, but I, I, I'm I'm just without trying to be too victim elderish about it. I'm just really sort of soul sapped by by the technology and the regulations around it, it just takes away the bog standard human, until we accept that human beings will make mistakes and you put up with it because that's the way the cookie crumbles. That seems to have gone. We want definite everything. Well, cricket has disappeared right up his own bum in this series uh, in India because now everyone is moaning about Hawkeye. Yeah. Well, we all know Hawkeye's crap. That's why it's got an inbuilt measure, uh, an inbuilt margin of error. That's why umpires call is in. And rugby's, rugby has followed cricket right into the same dead end. The, the, you know, if, if, if all you want is certainty, then, then sport ain't it for you. Go and do something else. Go and build a house. You know, do, do, some, do some measurements. But we're taking the human element away from the game and it's incredibly destructive. It's a shame. I'm, because I'm not sure. Right I'm there. not sure. I entirely agree with that monologue. I um, what I do think <laughs> is is that it's one of those things that you cannot, when you get involved in bringing high tech into sports, you look at American football. You look at the way in which they come to decisions, and usually, well, ninety nine percent of the time, the correct decisions they come to them very quickly. Their analysis is streets ahead of rugby and 
it's a problem because we're not using the the you know the chip technology that there is to the to the extent that we could and look it we it, it is we're stuck in a limbo land basically we haven't got the best of the tech world and we you, you know and it's undermining referees making decisions on uh, you know common sense decisions on the field i agree with that um and it's up to you, you know again it's up to the um you know the the authorities rugby unions and the world governing body to sort it out because it is beginning certainly in this six nations it's beginning to make a detrimental impact on the game without a shadow of a doubt there's too much of this sort of nitpicking there's too many cardinal laws not being applied you know the forward passes we've talked about it ad infinitum we've gone back to the bloody scrum put in etc cetera, etc cetera. there are real problems with you, you know with just if you if you've got laws of the game and what what you'd call cardinal laws you have to apply them or you cut the ground from under your own feet that's it yeah totally i would actually add by the way i thought christoph really had a pretty good game other than he let Trelangi go a bit offside too much ahead of the run which i think is he's, he's going to get pinged for a lot um in future uh, test appearances. I thought he had a pretty sound game. He just got that bit wrong there. And he just didn't give himself time to even think it through. Um, now, you know, it must be very, very difficult, but he just had to give himself 10 seconds before he blew the final whistle when it went into touch there to think, right, what happened there? I just need to have a look. You know, if you're going to have a look at the TMO, that would have been an occasion to have a look at it. One door the that's open, and we sort of touched upon it already, is as well with the shot clock and the introduction of it with something that is the elements interfering and the ball falling off the tee etc is Gar should Garbisi then be in his own right to pause the clock reset the ball and put it back given how rarely something like that would happen and how in um not in control Garbisi is over something like that yeah. I, I think that's just random and I'm um, okay so how, how it falls off in, in an indoor stadium I don't know but if you're going to have the 60 second clock the 90 second clock and it falls off I think that's just a bit of bad luck and that has to be built in you know you just have to accept that and get on with it like he did actually he reacted pretty well I thought yeah but you'd be... if there's anything else that was wrong about that um, <laughs> look tonight, I agree with you one of the things that I didn't understand as you say is that in an enclosed stadium how does the you know there's no wind or there shouldn't be how does the, the the ball fall off the tee? Well, it falls off because he's teed it up slightly wrongly. So, but within the leeway that he's got, he should have the time to address that. The thing that was weird about it, you're right, Brendan, is that when the um the the, the clock was eventually shown, it showed 20 seconds on it. Yeah, and, and it was almost done when you didn't even start in preparation. Other, you know, 40 <laughs> seconds of it. It was bizarre. Very Again, strange. I think he was waiting for this melee in front of him to clear in the physio to get the hell off or yeah. to sit down and be quiet. That's what I think he was doing. I don't know because we haven't got the isolated camera. Oh, of, course, of course, of course. This, this stuff was brought in because because okay, with every action, there's a reaction, isn't there? Says yeah. the, the philosopher from just outside Bristol. The, 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 point, the point is Who that is? this stuff was brought in because the kickers were gaming the system. They were looking at the clock. Yeah. And you know, just just trying to just trying to ensure that their kick because they're winning by a point, they don't care whether it goes over. They just want it to be dead. They want it to be the last act. Yeah. So they stood there, and, and we had those ridiculous things where people are standing there for ninety seconds plus, doing nothing at all but watching the clock. Embarrassing. Yeah. So they brought in the they brought in the kicking limit, but of course the flip side of that is that if you have a genuine issue. Um, as Garbisi did, and I think Brendan's raised some really, really good points there. I mean, there's the stuff that I hadn't thought of because I, I, I actually only watched the game on on, on catch up for various reasons, and uh, so I wasn't really aware of of, of the the sort of pre issues. Um, I think if you're going to have you're going to have this system, you have to have some flexibility in this stuff. The moment you're absolutely committed to the to the comma and full stop on the rules then I, I, I think you want the certainty on the one hand, but if there's no flexibility for a referee to act on his own initiative, I think the game's the worse for it. Yeah, well, the, the referee should be the final arbiter, but unfortunately, with the pressure that referees are now under yeah. in social media, yeah. none of them want to be the final arbiter. No, yeah. no. 
I mean, I mean, I mean, this, this whole thing about the bunker and the red card and the yellow card and what have you. You know, when did you last see a referee in a, in a, a bunker enabled match give a straight red? <laughs>